Hi there, and welcome to this web lecture on social psychology. Did you know there are different types of love? And that our sexuality can be explained by both nature and culture theories? My name is Peter Ruiten, and today we will be talking about close relationships. This web lecture will be divided in three different sections. In the first section, I will explain what the two different types of love are. After this, we will look at different types of relationships. And finally, we will explain the theories of sexuality. Two different types of love exist. The first type is what we call passionate love. This is a strong feeling of longing and desire for another person. The other type is companionate love, uh, which can be defined as a mutual understanding and caring for the other person. Now another way to look at this is by applying the so-called Sternberg's triangle. And this triangle states that love is composed of three different elements. The first element is passion. Passion is a state with high physiological arousal. The second element is intimacy. And intimacy is a feeling of closeness towards another person. The third element is commitment. And commitment is a conscious decision to be together with that other person. Relationships can mix these different elements in any way you can think of. And most relationships have two elements that are high and one element that is low. In addition to different types of love, there's also different types of relationships. And the first one is what we call an exchange relationship. An exchange relationship is based on reciprocity and fairness. In contrast to this, a communal relationship is based on mutual love and concern. According to attachment theory, people can be classified in four different attachment styles. These styles vary on two different dimensions, anxiety and avoidance. The anxiety dimension refers to attitudes towards the self, and the avoidance dimension refers to attitudes towards another person. The first attachment style is called secure attachment. People who have this attachment style are low on anxiety and low on avoidance. They trust their partners, they share their feelings, provide and receive support and comfort, and they enjoy their relationships. Preoccupied attachment is a style in which people are low on avoidance but high on anxiety. They want and enjoy closeness but worry that relationship partners will abandon them. Dismissing avoidant attachment is when people are low on anxiety but high on avoidance. They tend to view their partners as unreliable, unavailable and uncaring. Finally, fearful avoidant attachment has both high anxiety and avoidance. People with this attachment style have low opinions of themselves and keep others from getting close. In addition to having personal attachment styles, people in a relationship also tend to apply different thinking styles. And the success rate of a relationship can depend on the thinking style that people use in their relationship. If people apply a relationship enhancing thinking style, they tend to attribute the good behavior of their partner to internal factors. So if their partner does something good, they think they do this because they are a good person. If a person in a relationship applies a distress maintaining uh, thinking style, this means that they attribute good behavior to external factors. And then they think their partner does something good because somebody told them to do so. The last part of today's web lecture is sexuality. And different theories exist of where sexuality comes from. The first one is the evolutionary explanation, which states that our sex drive has been shaped by natural selection and therefore this is innate, we are born with this. In contrast to this, Social constructionist theory states that our sexual attitudes and behaviors are shaped by culture. So our sexual behavior is really influenced by the experiences we have throughout our lives. A third theory on sexuality is the social exchange theory. This theory states uh, that sex is a resource that women have and men want. And in order to get this, men need to do something for the women. The most recent theory of sexuality is erotic plasticity. This means that our sex drive can be shaped by cultural forces. So essentially we have an innate uh, sex drive and this can be uh, restrained by applying cultural forces. Another important concept in sexuality is jealousy. 
Jealousy is a fear to lose our partners. Several elements can explain where this jealousy comes from. The first is that sexual possessiveness is rooted in our systems, because in the past men could not be sure whether they were the father of their children. By being possessive, they could try to prevent their wives from having children with other men. We see that current societies can modify the sex drive we have and make us less jealous, but it cannot be completely eliminated. As such, jealousy seems to be a product of the person and the situation. To wrap up this web lecture, we have seen that different types of love exist and relationships can be built up from different elements of love. We have seen that different types of relationships exist and that the thinking style within a relationship could influence its success. And finally, we have seen how different theories of sexuality can influence our sex drives. That was all for today. Thank you for listening and hope to see you again soon.